All right, time to talk up the maize and blue here at Mark Rogers TV, the voice of college football. Please lock it in. Uh, if you enjoy the content, of course, hit the like button, subscribe, turn on the bell for the notifications. That way you know when we're going live as well. All right, Michigan football going to the practice field here today. We got Clayton Safey on the line from the Wolverine.com. You can catch him on at Rivals platform right there. Clayton, how are you doing today? Doing pretty well. How's it going, Mark? It's going pretty well. I know that uh, basketball's got uh, the state of Michigan a buzz uh, with a uh, top-notch team that's only lost one game and with a big win over the Scarlet and Gray yesterday. But we're going to talk some some football here. Spring practice is starting, and yep. this coaching staff is uh, very interesting. Another um, another coach coming in from the Baltimore Ravens. The obvious connection there. So Matt Weiss, the new quarterback coach coming in again from the NFL and uh, just uh, how this is uh, turned into a domino effect in regards to covering all the various positions on both sides of the ball. Yeah, well, let's go through it. This is the sixth new assistant coach that Jim Harbaugh has brought in this offseason, and he wasn't really intending on having to bring another one in. He had finalized the staff and you mentioned it spring ball starts today. So I think that makes it interesting as well that they're hitting the field with a guy coming in and Matt Weiss, who's now the quarterback's coach. So uh, basically this happened, you know, Friday afternoon. Uh, we actually broke the news at the Wolverine.com that Brian Jean married the linebackers coach. He was entering his second year. Uh, we'll be headed to Tennessee with their new staff. They're paying his buyout. They're giving him, uh, I don't know his exact title yet, but possibly a promotion and title, but definitely a, a pay gr upgrade. Um, so he's headed to Tennessee and, then Sunday morning, everybody wakes up and Michigan is hiring um, Matt Weiss, the running backs coach from the Ravens. So you kind of got to piece things together. Running backs coach from the Ravens. So people are like, OK, does that mean Mike McDonald, the new defensive coordinator from the Ravens, who was the linebackers coach there, is going to coach linebackers? That means there's only four guys on the defensive side of the ball. Then hours later, we find out that uh, Ron Bellamy, the wide receivers coach, will be moving to safeties, George Hilo, the safeties coach who had just come in from Maryland, will be moving to linebackers where he has actually more experience coaching. Um, and there you go, five and five. So like I said, uh, six new assistant coach for Michigan, only two coaches now uh, out of the assistants are in the same exact role they were in last season. Josh Gaddis is the offensive coordinator. He will also be the wide receivers coach as he has been the last two seasons. And then Sean Nua, the defensive line coach, will be the defensive line coach for his third season. Uh, Jay Harbaugh is still the special teams coordinator, but he moved from running backs to tight end. So if you followed all that, congratulations, because it is confusing. Um, but it looks like they, you know, you kind of felt like there was like, they weren't going to go with six offensive coaches, especially because Jim Harbaugh is an offensive guy as well, and only four on the defensive side. So it kind of made sense once the, uh, once the dust settled a little bit. But um you know, we'll we'll see what exactly happens with this, but we can get into a little bit more on Weiss as well if you want to. Yeah, I'm trying to wrap my mind around being in the in the in the shoes of Ron Bellamy, and yeah, you know, it'd be one thing if you had a few weeks or months to prepare uh, the next time you were going to see the guys on the field and really have to scheme and talk about technique and talk about positioning and just everything that goes into playing a position at that level. Uh, but being the wide receivers coach one day and spring practice starts and you're the safeties coach, like, I don't know what kind of game plan he would possibly have in regards to coaching, instructing, working with the coordinator in relation to the safety, playing a position in coordination with the rest of the defense, all of that. Yeah. And uh, so Ron Bellamy, for the, the like people out there that don't know, was uh, just brought in last month as the wide receivers coach. He's a former Michigan wide receiver, I guess. Apparently he had a short stint playing D-back at Michigan, maybe just in practice, not in games. But uh, regardless, he was you know, a high school head coach at West Bloomfield here, kind of built up a, a pretty good power program there. And he had just got in. He was just talking on, on a podcast uh, a couple of weeks ago about how he uh, immediately reached out to his receivers group. He said, we're going to bring back, you know, we're going to kind of instill some of the things that I experienced in the receiver room when I was here at Michigan. Well, now, you know, so Mike, I guess my point is like he hasn't been here where he knows all the guys anyway. Like he may have never met some of the guys that are defensive backs. Um, 
on this team. So, you know, it's going to be a transition for him. I guess you could say, well, he wasn't that deep into being the wide receivers coach anyway. So, uh, it'll, you know, work its way out. Um, it is weird. I, I kind of thought maybe there was a small chance that they were going to push back spring ball just because of this. But I think it is smart to start spring practice early this year because you could go on a pause and you want to get it all in before the end of the semesters here. And who knows, you know, how it's going to play out. Also, Michigan had a horrible season on the field. So I think they kind of wanted to get right back out there as soon as possible, especially having the three last games canceled. So uh, a crazy scenario. But yeah, for Ron Bellamy, I'm sure he'll embrace it. But he was really diving headfirst into being the wide receivers coach, already recruiting every wide receiver target. So uh, our our group chat uh, for our staff at the Wolverine.com yesterday was like, man, these guys are they're getting new primary recruiters like weekly at this point. Um, you know, the, the guys that they're recruiting. So uh, it is what it is, I guess. Jim Harbaugh was forced to make a move. He could have just hired a linebackers coach. But uh, the other thing about this is I think he – it kind of indicates that he was already looking at Matt Weiss uh, just with how quickly this went down and already kind of knew that he could shift some pieces around on his own staff, his existing staff, to make this happen. And uh, I guess that's exactly what happened. Yeah, Clayton Safety on the line from the Wolverine.com on Rivals. Please join him and the rest of the staff right there tracking Michigan football with the Wolverines going to spring practice, even though uh, weather here in the Northeast and certainly throughout the Midwest, nothing close to spring. But uh, we are hopeful here in the next few weeks. Luckily, they got an indoor, nice indoor building. That's why you build those big structures and pour yeah. all that money into the facilities. Exactly. So with Matt Weiss, I know I received a lot of questions okay, why are they hiring a running backs coach to coach quarterbacks? Well, certainly he was with the Baltimore Ravens on the offensive side of the football for 12 years. And prior to the two years at running back, he was working with quarterbacks and wide receivers based on uh, what I gathered. And um, that was pre Lamar Jackson. So that was more of a traditional downfield passing attack with Joe Flacco. Yeah. So that's the other interesting piece of this that I haven't even mentioned that Jim Harbaugh was going to be, the quarterbacks coach, I guess if, if I kind of glossed over that earlier, because, you know, they, they were able to bring in a quarterbacks coach to replace their linebackers coach because the head coach was going to be the quarterbacks coach. Um, and I think a lot of people were kind of excited about that because, um, you know, he had been a quarterbacks coach for the Oakland Raiders. Um, you know, I think he was the quarterbacks coach for San, uh, San Diego university of San Diego when he was the head coach there, obviously they have a you know, lesser budget at the FCS level, but uh, regardless, he's, he's kind of done some good things when he has his hand a little bit more in the offense. And I think you've kind of, kind of seen them struggle a little bit more over the last couple of years when he kind of took a step back and handed the reins over to Josh Gaddis. But yeah, um, Matt Weiss as a quarterback's coach, you kind of mentioned he has some of that experience working with Joe Flacco with the Ravens. Um, and then I think the most intriguing part of this entire hire with Matt Weiss is he's not just going to be, a quarterbacks coach that may be his title but uh if you read more on him uh and I actually may just read this from his Baltimore Ravens bio because I think this is the most intriguing part John Harbaugh hired him to be his strategy coordinator he was I think the first ever strategy coordinator in the NFL and he did a ton of analytics on game management when to go for it on fourth down you've seen the Ravens be uh the most aggressive team in the NFL over the last few years uh, that's in part to, and, and he's not in that position anymore. Uh, when he took the full time running backs role, they promoted another guy to that role, but he was the first guy to do it for the Ravens. So, uh, from 2009, when Weiss began assisting the game management to 2018, the Ravens produced the NFL's most successful coach challenges, uh, 42, including the postseason, with Weiss's assistance on drives beginning in the last two minutes of the first half. Baltimore ranked fifth in points differential in 2018. First in 2017 and second in 2016. The Ravens were the only team to rank in the top five in this category in three straight seasons. Additionally, with help from Weiss, Baltimore twice used an intentional safety to win a game, including in uh, the Super Bowl victory back in 2012 against Jim Harbaugh's San Francisco 49ers. And I thought that was kind of Jim Harbaugh is not a guy to forget when somebody beats you, including his brother and including, you know, the Baltimore Ravens. And he probably had that in the back of his head as well. Uh, why does this matter? I guess because there's been frustration, uh, you know, with how Michigan runs their two minute drill, how they manage the clock uh, under two minutes. They take way too long. If you watch that Michigan State game last year, 
Um, they took forever to score at the end, and then they barely had time. They you know, didn't get the onside kick anyway, but they would have hardly had any time to try to either tie that game up or you know take the lead and win that game at the end. So, And that's just one example. There's been plenty of frustration. Trust me, being on these message boards and being around Twitter, uh, the, what the fans are saying. So I think that helps as well analytics something that they want to bring in and then also the run game strategy we you know you can't gloss over that he was a running backs coach that he did have a hand in some of the game planning uh in the run game for the ravens uh which has been kind of an innovative run game if you watch them especially with lamar jackson in there the kind of things that they're doing and they're kind of bringing the college game to the nfl as it starts to trend that way so that's kind of the thing i like the most i think about this hire otherwise it's you know you bring in a quarterbacks coach he's got some experience there Harbaugh is a quarterback uh, himself, so you know you wouldn't be necessarily too worried. Although they haven't developed guys, you know, the best over the last couple of years. Um, but I think that's the that's the number one thing with this hire, and I think that's what kind of people were hesitant at first with you know trying to piece everything together and how it's going to work. But I think this has people a little bit more excited about it. Yeah, when you outline it like that, it makes a whole lot more sense, especially when you consider what's happening in places like. Alabama, where they hire this wealth of NFL experience on yes. staff to break down these kind of analytics and situations to clean them up. Uh, because you would think maybe on one hand, oh, why can't Jim Harbaugh know what uh, the game situations are and the timing and, and clean that up himself? But there is a lot of traffic going on on a college football sideline on a Saturday afternoon during these situations, trying to get um, – you know, it's it's not what it was 20 years ago when everybody's going with the same 11 on both sides of the ball pretty much uh, every down. You've got so many sub packages on both sides of the ball, personnel going in and out, trying to figure out what's what's going on. And uh, the sophistication of working the, the clock management and the game management has just gone through the roof. And so whatever you can do to get everybody on the same page and understand what – or the best decisions to be made on the field uh, can be the difference between wins and losses, certainly. Yeah, and it's not just like call your timeout here or um, you know throw the challenge flag here. They don't actually have a physical flag in the college game, but um, you know I think it's more so fourth and two. You know what's the percentage here, or you know going for two. You know down fourteen, like you're seeing in the NFL, all these teams doing, and then. Uh, or, you know, down 14, you score, you go for two, like things like that, that are becoming the trend in the NFL because they have almost unlimited budgets when it comes to support staff. And you mentioned Alabama, who also probably has literally an unlimited budget. Uh, you see them bring in, that's why they bring in like the one year rental of that's going to be Doug Marone as their offensive line coach, because they can, right. And they're just expending as much money as they, as they can, you know, um, Michigan doesn't necessarily have that. They do have a big budget and you can't use that as an excuse at a place like Michigan. But uh, like you mentioned, having guys and somebody mentioned on our message board, oh, this is kind of a sneaky way to uh, bring an analytics guy down to the sidelines. It's not sneaky because it's it's just it is what it is. He also is a is a coach and has a track record there. But it is kind of that trend. Like I keep saying how you you see more guys with an analytics background in the NFL in college football now. And um, I think it was smart in that respect. Obviously we'll see it, uh, how, you know, how it plays out. I've said that with every hire that Michigan's made this off season, you really won't know until you actually see the fruits of it on the field in the fall. Yeah. Analytics taking over sports has made a whole lot of sense. And then to have that combination of, you got to have the football people teaching yes. how to play football, but in terms of making decisions, that is very analytical and it has nothing to do with knowing how to play football. It has to do with understanding, yes, time and yep. percentages, as you just outlined. And you can watch any college football game, and certainly the NFL more so right now versus what we watched just 10 or 15 years ago. And the decisions being made uh, are completely different on fourth down with the yardage and distance, understanding what three means versus seven. And all of that, two-point conversions and what makes sense and projecting scores ahead, it's it's totally different and makes total sense because football used to be a, okay, it's fourth and one, you punt. Regardless, you just punt. And you know yes. it's fourth down and you punt, not understanding, okay, does this make a whole lot of sense where the other team's 38-yard line and our kicker can't make it from 55? And if we give it up here, 
is it really that you know much of a risk versus we only get so many possessions in a game and all that has been filtered through and determined that these are the best way to uh, to attack the game no question about that talk michigan football here uh, on a regular basis uh, with the help of clayton safey from the wolverine.com on rivals so join him and the rest of the staff over there on rivals the wolverine.com Joe Milton was supposed to be the guy, and of course he took over um, game one against Minnesota, had a nice game and a big uh, win for the Wolverines. Threw it a ton against Michigan State. I'm looking at this at 32 for 51 for 300 yards, and then the play kind of dissipated from there. Uh, the Indiana effort, he threw a couple costly picks. He did throw for 344 yards, but they were behind uh, by a pretty big deficit most of the game, and then against Wisconsin and Rutgers and finally benched in favor of Kate McNamara in that comeback victory uh, against the Scarlet Knights. So Joe Milton has decided to move on. Yeah, and it's kind of funny, the trajectory of his career is he was always kind of known as the guy who was, you know, third string there for Shea, behind Shea Patterson and Dylan McCaffrey, but always fighting for the job, always kind of preparing as the starter, quote unquote, that everybody, you know, the quote that everybody says basically. But he was that guy coming into the building early, uh, leaving late. He was kind of a project, you know, in high school. He had the big arm and he's got the physical tools, but he knew he had some catching up to do when it comes to actually being a quarterback, managing the game, knowing the playbook, and caught himself up uh, to a certain extent. Actually, kind of beat out Dylan McCaffrey before this last season. Um, McCaffrey opts out before fall camp even started. So you wonder uh, if he could have won that job over him, um, you know, actually with a real fall camp. But uh, regardless, Milton starts, like you said, he had a couple good games. Um, he was still spotty when it came to decision-making. I thought, you know, he wanted to throw the long ball when there's a guy underneath open and, and just things like that, I guess, didn't see the field. I thought as well as he needed to, to manage the offense, he kind of made the wild play a couple times. Um, but yeah, I mean, this, and it's funny because now, you know, I guess we heard that, um, you know, I guess he didn't actually handle getting benched that well. Um, and you know, the writing was kind of on the wall. That's why this wasn't really a surprising move by Joe Milton. He wanted to get his degree, which he did. He's got three years left of eligibility. Uh, so I wish him well going forward. Um, someplace new, I wouldn't be surprised to see him land somewhere down in Florida, like a UCF or something like that, uh, which would be good for him. He's from the Orlando area. So, um, it is what it is at this point, but it leaves Michigan kind of thin at the quarterback spot. Cade McNamara, will be a redshirt sophomore. He's the guy that took over for Joe Milton last year. Um, and I thought he looked really, really good against Rutgers. Not great competition. He looked pretty good against Penn State to start the game. And then he got hurt. So you kind of have a guy coming off of a shoulder uh, injury, which you know I don't think was serious in any way. We heard he was going to be able to play had Michigan played uh, Ohio State and Iowa in those last couple games. But either way, he doesn't have many snaps under his belt. And now you have a highly touted recruit and uh, true freshman J.J. McCarthy coming in, who's an early enrollee, so he's practicing today. Um, but again, unproven. So it's going to be interesting with this quarterback spot, what they do. Do they bring in uh, a transfer from the portal? I think there's over 100 quarterbacks in the portal right now, which is insane. So you could probably get one at least to compete and push these guys at the very least. Um, we heard that they kind of kicked the tires on Jack Cohn from Wisconsin uh, about a month and a half ago. He's now at Notre Dame. So We'll see what they do with the quarterback spot going forward, but it is officially, for now, at least a two-man race between guys that have some upside, and, and Cade McNamara has shown some good things, but you got to put it together. And are they the NFL-type guy that Michigan needs to beat the Ohio States of the world and be in the college football playoff? Um, at least a guy that would get drafted, maybe like an Ian Book or something, if he gets drafted in the late round? That remains to be seen. They're hoping J.J. McCarthy or Cade McNamara can be that guy, and uh, we'll just have to see, but they they certainly now are in a battle for that spot. Never boring in Michigan, especially this particular offseason with the transfer portal, the coaching changes happening the day of, up to the day of spring practice starting. We got Clayton Safey on the line, fortunately, to help us sort through all of it. Uh, you catch him and the rest of the staff there at the Wolverine.com on Rivals. So spring practice starts on this Monday. Just that when you look at the team on both sides of the ball, and what intrigues and interests you? What are going to be those points that you're going to be looking for as spring practice unfolds where you're going to be interested to see how certain areas of the team develop? What, what are those positions or those players? 
Yeah, well, the quarterback race is one, but we already talked about that. And then two more things come to mind with this. Um, the offensive line. So two years ago, they had four players drafted um, and were really young last year. They had some injuries. You saw Jalen Mayfield get hurt at the right tackle spot. Now he's entered the draft um, as a, you know, after his third season. Um, so they're young. And I do like a lot of the guys that got some snaps last year. Obviously, it was a shortened season. And then you saw, you know, some shuffling in and out with injuries. So they didn't get to play, you know, necessarily every game. Guys like Zach Zinter, uh, Reese Atterbury, I know they really like at the center spot. Um, so there's a ton of promise with this offensive line. But they get a new position coach now in Sharon Moore, who's now also the co-offensive coordinator. Ed Warner uh, was let go this offseason. So that'll be interesting. You know, what Sharon Moore does with this offensive line group. He's never been an offensive line coach. He played it at a high level, blocking for Adrian Peterson at Oklahoma. He's uh, been a good tight ends coach. He's been a good recruiter. But can he develop this group now and get a young group up to speed? That's the number one thing outside of the quarterback battle that I'm looking at. And then the second thing is the defense just as a whole because Mike McDonald comes in. He also has no coordinator experience. Uh, he was the linebackers coach, as we mentioned earlier, for the Baltimore Ravens. Um, and by all accounts, seems like a really good coach. He brings the energy. He's going to be able to motivate these guys listening to him talk. But, um, you know, just I'll just be interested to see what exactly this defense looks like. I'm not sure we're going to know much because they kind of go in that submarine uh, during spring and fall practice. And and you don't want to show anything, right, in terms of the schematics of what this defense is going to look like. It would be to your advantage to keep people guessing your opponents come the fall. But just looking at how they can kind of piece things together, you lose Quiddy Pay, who, who could be a first-round draft pick, at the defensive end spot. You get Aiden Hutchinson back, but he's off of a broken leg. Um, he is one of the top, you know, defensive linemen returning in college football, you know, appears to be. Um, what are they going to do with the other spots that looked weaker this past season, like linebacker and corner? Uh, I like the safeties with Dax Hill and Brad Hawkins returning, but it's just kind of the defense as a whole is something I'll be watching, what it's going to look like in terms of schematics, and then also who emerges as some of the guys that are replacing uh, some of the more productive players that are leaving on this on that side of the ball. And also who emerges from this uh, 2021 class with 23 signees, 10 of them already on campus, including some of the front liners like J.J. McCarthy, the five-star yeah. quarterback, Donovan Edwards, four-star running back, Giovanni Alhadi at uh, offensive tackle, and uh, Junior Colson, one of your favorites uh, there at outside linebacker. He's on campus and ready to go. Yeah, this is a really, really good freshman class, and all the real gems, like you mentioned, are kind of already on campus, which I think is a plus for them. It's a plus for the whole, you know entire program. These guys came in saying they want to be the ones to you know, come in and make that immediate impact, at least push guys in practice to be able to turn things around from what was a two and four season the year before, and certainly not the standard at Michigan. And um so are they going to be able to come in? Is one guy going to win a starting job? Two guys, three guys, it could be. Um, I certainly think we'll see some of them have some playing time come the fall. Donovan Edwards comes to mind. Uh, so does Xavier Worthy, who's not an early enrollee um, at the wide receiver spot, but is, just has so much speed. I think they're going to get him on the field. Junior Colson could be a guy that wins a job at linebacker, um, especially depending on what this defense look like. looks like. I think it could be a good fit for him. Um and we'll see. Yeah, I think there's going to be some freshmen that make an impact just because of, um, you know, some guys that didn't produce, some of the veteran guys that didn't produce last season. Clayton Safey on Rivals, uh, the Wolverine.com. You can check it out right on the banner right there. Track him to uh, Twitter and, of course, on over to Rivals uh, for the best in Michigan football coverage. Clayton, we always appreciate the conversation. You stopping by, and especially in a situation like this, you got to pretty much set the record straight on all that's uh, going on with all the uh, dominoes uh, and uh, both sides of the ball with uh, six coaching changes and uh, got a lot of guys just moving back and forth. Yeah. I hope everybody followed that, but you know, uh, but yeah, thanks for having me. Yeah. Appreciate it as always.